Using the Fletcher formula, we can calculate the bending stress in a beam. Now due to the transverse load, the shear stress is developed. We have a horizontal shear and the vertical shear. We know that the shear has been defined as a tendency of the two adjacent portions of a body to slide each other. Here we will get the best idea of a horizontal shear from the simple illustration. Consider here we have several thin boards on the two support. When the boards are of the same length, the ends will be practically straight and even. And if we apply the load at the center, so let apply the load at the center of the pi rear. This one is downward load. It's called as transverse force is equal to F. So each boards here tend to slide on one above the other or below it and in this way moves its ends from their original position. The horizontal motion of one board over the other is what is called as the horizontal shear. So this was the situation when we have thin boards, they are not connected, neither they are glued, neither they are screwed or neither they are bolted. So here we will find here there are different length of the each thin board and this horizontal shearing is developed between the two layers of the board. Suppose we place a glue and we have a glue between the each of these thin boards or we can have a bolt. In that case, there is a tendency to slide but the motion is prevented by the glue or by the bolt. This resistance measures the horizontal shear. Again, if the boards are secured by means of bolted and if the load is applied. So again, you have to apply the load here and what we observe here is that the boards cannot slip. The shearing resistance this time is offered by the bolts. Instead of considering here, the pile of a board is replaced by one single beam. So this beam has a number of internal fibers and it has an infinite internal number of fiber. When no load is applied, the beam is horizontal and when the load is applied at the center, it will flex. So there is a tendency of one horizontal portion is to slide over the other. So if this portion will slide on this side, then the bottom fiber will oppose the resistance to it and this resistance will be opposed in the opposite direction. Again, we have the resistance is offered by the bottom fiber and in this fashion, we are continuously getting the shear developed by the each of the adjacent face. So there is a still a tendency of one horizontal portion to slide past the adjacent face and sliding motion and this is prevented by the internal fibers of the beam. So the resistance that the fibers are capable of offering is called as horizontal shearing strength. Now, if the load is applied is large, in that case, the shearing stress exceeds the limiting value. And in that case, the member will fail under the shearing. Normally, in the case of the fibrous materials such as wood or wrought iron are more likely to fail in a horizontal shear than those materials that have no natural internal cleavage surface. Timber has a very low value of shearing strength parallel to the grain and hence the short beam tends to fail from the horizontal shear rather than from bending. So instead of bending failure, it will be the shear failure in the case of timber because it has a very low strength. So what is the relation of a bending with the horizontal shear that we want to discuss this time and how to calculate the shear stress? We know that bending stress is maximum on the top fiber and bottom fiber. In this case, we have compression stress on the top fiber and the bending stress is tensile in nature at the bottom fiber and at neutral axis, the bending stress is zero. So what type of shear stress distribution we have that we want to develop in this video? Shear stress is normally parallel to the plane. So this value of the shear stress is represented as tau xy. Whereas the shear stress on this plane is represented as tau yx. And mathematically already we have proved that tau yx is same as equal to tau xy. This one is the shear stress acting on the negative face in a downward direction. And this one is the shear stress acting at the bottom plane in the leftward direction. So this value is also equal to tau xy. This relation already known to us. So vertical shear and the horizontal shear are one and same. That is value of tau xy is same as equal to tau yx. While during the Fletcher formula, we have assumed that the beam is under a bending force and its layers like on one another as a deck of cards would do if it is bent. Since the beam layers cannot slide relative to each other, a shear stress is develops. 
within the beam just as the shear stress developed between the card faces as they were glued together. So shear stress in the beams are relatively small in magnitude and can be ignored for one piece of beam. But for composite beams that are glued or welded or riveted, bolted or somehow attached together, this shear stress can be significant enough to tear off the welding or bolts. So the magnitude of the shear stress developed is very small as compared to the bending stress produced. So practically they are neglected. But if the bolts are used or the rivets are used, then you must consider the shear stress. Otherwise we can forget about the magnitude of the shear stress with respect to the bending stress. So if the beam is made of a single piece, then the magnitude of the shear stress developed we can neglect. But if it is made up of a small number of boards and the it is glued or either it is riveted or it is either bolted in that case we must consider the effect of the shear stress and particularly in the case of wood or the wrought iron they will fail by the shear so must consider the effect of the shear so depending upon the material and depending upon the number of boards or single unit you have to consider the effect of the shear stress in shear force and the bending moment diagram, we have developed the relation between the shear force V and the bending moment M. We know that the rate of change of bending moment dm with respect to dx is same as equal to the shear force V. Or we can write here that we have change in the bending moment dm is same as equal to V multiplied by dx. So we are very much familiar with the given equation of the shear force V and the bending moment M. So if I integrate the equation here, that is we have integral of dm is same as equal to the integral of V dx. Then we can calculate here the change in the bending moment. That is we have delta M is same as the area under the shear force diagram. So integral of V dx represents here the area under the shear force diagram and if dm by dx that is same as dy by dx if the equal to zero that is the shear force equal to zero or the shear force changes the sign in that case we know that the bending moment is maximum so whenever the shear force will change the sign that is from negative to positive or positive to negative one time it will become equal to zero at that particular point the bending moment is maximum so these are the two uses of the given equation dm by dx equal to v or dm equal to v into dx so we're going to use this equation for development of a shear stress so remember this equation here dm by dx equal to v so in derivation i will going to use this equation when we have started the bending stress very first video we have introduced the pure bending so again we'll consider here a case of pure bending this time i will consider a simply supported beam where we have a support at the ends. So there are two support at the end. Let's say we have two load is acting on the beam in a downward direction. And let's say the load is acting equal to P and another load is acting is also equal to P. From the left support, the load P is acting at distance equal to A and the second load P is acting from the right support at a distance equal to A and these two external load has a separated by distance equal to 2A. Because of symmetrical loading, we have reaction at this support is equal to P as well as on this support is also equal to P and we can develop here the shear force diagram and the bending moment diagram that already we have done in the case of pure bending. Let's consider the shear force diagram here on the left support we have load is equal to p so you have to move vertically upward by distance equal to p no load is acting from this point to this point so we have constant value of a shear force and because of p we have load is again equal to zero then between from this point to this point there is no load so shear force equal to zero and at this point we have load is acting in a downward direction that equal to p no load is acting between this load and the support so the shear force is remain constant and finally we have reaction at p will make it equal to zero so we will get here two rectangle in the shear force diagram one rectangle is constructed above is a positive and one rectangle is constructed below the zero reference level that will be negative and in between the two external load we have shear force is equal to zero 
the bending moment at both the support will be equal to zero this one is a positive shear force and we have a rectangle so we'll get a triangle in the bending moment diagram and the change in the magnitude of the bending moment that is del time is same as the area under the shear force area under the shear force is p multiplied by a so we have here bending moment equal to p multiplied by a there is no change in the shear force so area under the shear force diagram is zero so the bending moment is remain constant that equal to p multiplied by a and then we have negative value of the shear force and the area is same as p multiplied by a but negative value so so this one is a bending moment diagram suppose we take here a section form between the two section planes the section plane a and the section plane b what we observed for this section a to b there is shear force will be equal to zero and we have a constant value of bending moment so for the section anywhere between a and b we have the value of the shear force will be equal to zero if the value of the shear force will be zero the shear stress will be equal to zero but we have a constant value of a bending moment so bending stress will be produced so if we develop here the state of a stress between a and b then you have to show here the bending stress either tension or compression you can show anyone this value represent the value of sigma x and the sigma x is same as equal to sigma b maximum value but for this case we have shear stress will be equal to zero so value of tau xy will be equal to zero so there is no need to show the shear stress so anywhere between this point to this point that is between the section a b we have the state of a stress is consist of only one stress that equal to the bending stress but if you consider any two section near the support either left support or right support suppose i consider here a section between c and d so anywhere near the support we have section is cd either you can show on the left support or we can show on the right support so you will get these sections here and in this case we have shear force is a constant value but the bending moment is variable so we have the lower value of the bending moment on the left hand side that is at section c we have lower value of a bending stress and on the right hand side that is on the section d we have variable value of a bending stress bending stress at d will be higher as compared to c so between c and d we observe that there is a change in the bending moment will takes place as well as the shear force also act and the value of the shear force is remain constant here so suppose i represent here the section cd so let's assume here that this one is a section cd left hand side will represent c right hand side will represent d section cd we are considering here the left side we have section ac on the right side we have d on this case we have the shear force acting is a positive value so the shear stress acting is a positive value so one value we have to show the positive that will be the shear force equal to v and this will going to cancel it at surface d bending moment is positive and is a smaller value at c so let represent it the smaller value as equal to m at d we have a larger value so that larger value will be represented as m plus dm now dm here is nothing but the area under the shear force diagram that is this area so in this case we can replace dm as product of the shear force is equal to p and corresponding distance will be let's say this distance is a small distance here and we have taken the distance equal to dx so area of this rectangle will be replacing here dm and we have dm is equal to p multiplied by dx in this zone the beam the change in the bending moment that is dm is given as p multiplied by dx and the shear force v is same as equal to the force p in the bending moment diagram here we have thickness of the section we have taken equal to dx our corresponding value is equal to m this value is represented as m plus dm so there is a difference of dm and this difference of dm that is this value is a dm and this value of dm is same as p multiplied by dx that is the you have to continuously use the relation between the shear force and the bending moment then you can calculate how the bending moment will change when we have the change in the shear force 
So we will require this concept in the next video where we will going to develop the relation for the shear stress. So any portion here from the load to the load P, the shear stress exists as well as the bending moment will exist. So in this case we need to calculate the value of shear stress tau xy as well as the bending stress sigma P. But to construct the state of a stress here we require the knowledge of shear stress. So our next job is to develop the equation for shear stress. To back the video you are watching is from the app which is the more class app available on Google store. And in this app we will cover all subjects involved in mechanical engineering for gate. Join the course directly from your mobile. The link is given here.